As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. It's the first week of August. There are sunflowers everywhere and they're about three weeks away from being fully grown and so are the white-tailed deer. Hi everybody, I'm Keith Warren. Welcome to the show and to Ohio where today we're at X Factor Whitetails. I fell in love with deer farming about 15 years ago and didn't get my own deer until a little over 10 years ago. But I'll tell you, I, I was like a sponge. I was listening to everybody in the industry. And there was one name that kept coming up over and over again. As far as this guy, uh, he was from the Midwest and he was growing some big deer and his name is Russ Beller. I'm Russ Beller. I'm with X Factor Whitetails of Ohio. I've been a deer farmer for 25 years, started in 1990, and uh, I just love to see those antlers grow. The reason I got into deer farming, I, was, I bought a piece of property in Alberta, Canada uh, 25 years ago, 26, and uh, those farmers up there was raising some white-tailed deer, and I thought I could do that in Indiana where I lived. I had a piece of property that had 3,200 acres with it, and I took 1,700 and fenced it and built a nice lodge and, and started raising deer and I've been hooked on it ever since. It takes three years to raise a, to raise a deer, to, to harvest that deer at, th at three years old. Uh, if you took a cow and bred a cow, it takes three years to get a cow and a calf to the market. And today is the highest price ever, ever for cattle. You might get $1,500. For the same animal, deer, you could generally get around 10 to 15,000 for him. Which one you'd rather have? 15,000 or 1,500? And a deer eats seven times less feed than a cow. The cool thing about white-tailed deer farming is that you don't have to have a big piece of property to do it. It doesn't take a whole lot of money to get into it. And especially when you've got a business model like Russ Beller has here, uh, Russ isn't chasing the breeder market. And, and what we mean by that is chasing the breeder market. There's some exceptional big deer out there. And there's some people making an exceptional pile of money off the breeder market. But you know what, Russ has decided like you would probably decide if you are gonna get in the deer farming industry to not chase the breeder market, but be in the production side of things. And so literally you can get some semen off some exceptional bucks like X Factor for a very good price and put it in your does and you're producing some animals that, well, if you're gonna compare those animals to the animals on the outside, the free range animals, uh, they're probably better than 95% of the, of the free range animals out there. And that would be in the production side of the business. So you could actually farm those animals, find people that have preserves, game preserves like this, and be able to, to be a supplier. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, the North American Deer Registry, Bean Fence Company, winadeerfarm.com, the Texas Deer Association, 
Newport Laboratories, Game Management Systems, Shock Effect Maximizer and Seacal, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, ByMyDeer.com, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, Record Rack Deer Feeds, and by All Seasons Feeders. It's a lifestyle. Today's program is brought to you by the Texas Deer Association. Well, that's a pretty expensive tractor right there, and one would think that you've got to have a lot of money to be a deer farmer. That couldn't be any further from the truth. And the reason why is because somebody we're setting up this year absolutely free to be a deer farmer. That's right. All you have to do is have a small piece of property. We're going to come. We're going to bring the deer. We're going to build pens. We're going to bring you the feed. We're going to set you up as a deer farmer absolutely free. Why? Because we want to promote deer farming and we want more people to get involved. That's the whole purpose. So if you'd like to have an opportunity to win a deer farm, go to the website winadeerfarm.com and do it right now and good luck. All right, so how old are these guys, Ralph? Oh, those two smaller ones there, are, one's a yearling, one's a two-year-old. Those other bucks there are all three-year-old. How many of them go back to X-Factor? Every one of them has got either grandsons or sons of X-Factor. You know, I can look at some of them and, and just from, I mean, if you were to take the antlers off of them, I can look at them and actually see X-Factor in, in their face. I mean, the, the way their faces are shaped. I mean, there's a big one over there. He's got a flyer off of his left side. Whew, that's a pretty deer. Well, he puts a lot of nice bucks out there. I've had some as high as uh, 600 inches out of him. Out of X-Factor? Yes, out of X-Factor. Well, I know that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these deer in general, and, and, I, and I think, you know, X-Factor had a lot of non-typical stuff on him. And, I mean, the older he gets, of course, a lot of these deer, the more non-typical they're going to go. But when X-Factor was in a, his prime, he was, I mean, he was big framey, and he, I thought he was one of the most beautiful deer ever. But I'm looking at these guys, and I'm thinking, there's a lot of typical frame deer in here. I mean, sure, they got some flyers and some little trash off their points, but for the most part, it really surprises me that X-Factor winds up throwing something so clean. X-Factor generally throws 80% uh, of those bucks out of X-Factor looks like that. I've only had about 10% that looked like he was, that was palmated and, uh, and have all the junk that he had. Well, why do you why do you think that? You know, I don't know. He, you know, he came from a background of some very good typical bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, some of these deer right here, I, and, and looking at them, I mean, they're the. This is the thing that blows my mind. You come up to, I mean, I'm from Texas, and I see Texas deer that are 225 pounds. Well, these deer right here, tell everybody how heavy these deer are. Ah, uh, they'll go around 300. 280 to 300 generally. I, we uh, got a scales and when we have to run run them in to work on them, about 310 is the highest we ever get one. And so when you take a look at the antlers on these guys, proportionally, I mean, they, it's, it's, I mean, they look big. You know, I mean, you're looking at an animal that's 280, 300 pounds. I mean, yes, the antlers look big, but I think until you actually hold the antlers in your hand, that's when you really can't imagine how big they are. Well, X Factor, we cut him because uh, it gets too big to carry sometimes, and we cut him. They the most they've ever weighed was 32 pounds. For the antlers. Antlers, just the antlers, 32 pounds. Oh my gosh! And so, as, as a deer farmer, I mean, yes, we're we're interested in growing big deer. We want the biggest antlers we can get, but we also want to push the biggest bodies too. You've got to have the body to carry that rack. Well. I'm sitting here looking at these guys and I'm thinking they are beautiful. It's really a surprise to me to see how clean they are coming out of X Factor. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed because I like clean looking deer like this, but, but one thing that I'm noticing out of these deer, they're exceptionally calm. But when these deer are released then, again, they're not going to be calm like this. No, 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 no. You take them off that feed when they go back to eating natural grass and stuff like that, they'll, they'll, be, just as, they'll be just like a regular deer. Well, you talk about feed. I know that uh, you've got a ton of sunflowers planted around the property. And like you said, you make your own feed. How important do you think those sunflowers are to producing the kind of deer that you're producing here? Oh, I think it's a key to it. Uh, 
to have the sunflowers. Sunflowers, I have my nutritionist tell me all the stuff that's in these sunflowers and the vitamin E and the C and the E and everything is just unbelievable. Well, this is amazing. I mean, I'm just looking at these guys and going, I mean, it's uh, right now we're the first week of, or of uh, August right now. First week of August. So how much more growing do you think they have to do? I think they got another three weeks. Some of them has got another three weeks. Well then, okay, and I'm looking at them. Most of them are nice typical frame. You got a few of them in there that are non-typical. Uh, there's a couple in there that uh, actually in that group that, I mean, they're real non-typical. What, what is that from? You think they're from antler damage or genetics? Oh, a little bit of genetics. I, I, we only got one in here that's got antler damage. Uh, he hurt that is uh, when he shedded the antler. Um, and I think that's what it was. Well, there's some big old deer. That's for doggone sure. Well, if somebody wants more information about deer uh, and what you do, how do they get a hold of you, Russ? Oh, they get a hold, go to our website. We got X Factor Whitetails of Ohio and they can see everything, everything we do there. Okay, all righty. Man, I really like that guy right there. Mm-hmm. Today's show is brought to you in part by BuyMyDeer.com, your online source for monster whitetails.